The Three Angels Media International, 3AMI, is a Christian media organization that creates multicultural and multiracial value-based inspirational contents and entertainment using innovative technology. We tell and share stories of hope that shape and mold character, challenge our audiences to schedule their priorities, heal, uplift, and restore. 3 AMI will enrich viewers and diverse populations and families through films, series, shows, comedies, romance, thrillers, documentaries, mission stories, music, faith-based sermons, health and lifestyle, and other media presentations etc. to empower Adventist families and the Christian communities around the world to live on purpose while we wait for the second and soon return of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Subscribe to 3AMI at 3AMIFilms.com Subscribe also to 3AMI YouTube channel. Welcome to 3 Angels Media International Lesson Discussion. We are excited to share this incredible opportunity to discuss lessons of daily living. I am your host, Pastor John Wampo. I'm excited once again to share this stage and to discuss with you with my dear wife, Pastor Jen. Good evening and welcome to Three Angels Media International. As we continue in this wonderful discussion for this week, titled Worship That Never Ends. Worship That Never Ends. I'm inviting you to open your heart and to be prepared to share in that worship that will never end Amen. in the new heaven when Jesus comes. We are going to sing together as we go on this all hell, the power of Jesus' name. time to share in that wonderful kingdom of our God. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness towards us. And we are excited to know that you are always there for us. And that soon and very soon, we are going to enter into another wonderful time of rest from one new moon even to the other, where we will worship you, the King of Kings, in a worship that will never end. Thank you, our dear God. Abide with us as we study now and help us to be prepared to meet you soon, our coming King. This we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Jen, kindly share with us the memory test. 
I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Psalms 104 verse 33. Amen. As our experience of God's grace and power increases, we are prompted to ask with the psalmist, what shall I render to our compassionate Lord for all his benefits towards me? Hallelujah. Amen. What shall we as God's people render to the Lord? For all the Lord has done for you in this life. Just pause and think about it. What shall we render to this our compassionate God? The inevitable reply is to devote our lives, our entire being, to be faithful to our God. That's a challenge for you today. What are you able to render to a compassionate God. Through worship. God is seeking for through worshipers. In the Psalms, Israel is not simply a nation, but the great assembly. This reveals Israel's primary calling to praise God and to be a witness about him to other nations because the Lord wants all the world to join his people in worship. The Lord's people are identified with the righteous who worship the Lord and whose hope is in him and in his love. Praise the Lord. Praising the Lord in the congregation is perceived as ideal worship. This does not mean, however, that the prayer and the praise of the individual in Israel assume a secondary meaning. By contrast, the individual's worship of God feeds the communal worship with renewed praise. While, in turn, individual worship develops is fullest potential in close relationship with the community. The worshiping community is also called the assembly, assembly of the upright. The upright know God and are known, known by God. God. Hallelujah. Very important point that you should bear in mind in this lesson today. The upright know God, and they are also known by God, because nothing is hidden from God. And this experience permeates every aspect of their existence. And the question is, do you know God? Know God? And does God know you? As his child. As his child. As the one that can stand in the gap as a faithful God, what? Is your relationship with your God? What's the relationship of your worship? Is it shown in your response to God, in your response in the community, in your response in the church, in your lived experience, in your character, in the dispositions? That's why we all need to lift our hands in the sanctuary where our worship to God and our lifestyle will culminate. Yes, Pastor Jen, can you help us with Psalm 134? Oh, praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. Amen. All you serve at night in the house of the Lord. Amen. Lift up your hands towards the sanctuary and praise the Lord. Yes. May the Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Jerusalem. Amen. May the Lord who made heaven and earth. So the outcome of our worship to God is the outpouring of his yes. blessings to us. And it shows when praises go up, blessings come. abundant blessings come down. In a house of praise, in a place where there is 
multitude of praise. That place will never lack yes. the blessings of God. It will never run short of God's blessings. So we are encouraged to praise. We are encouraged to worship God in praise, to devote our time to say, God, I remember all that you have done for me. The, the psalmist is challenging us. How, how much are you able to pay back to God? What shall I render? What shall you render to God? Oh. Other than to say, God, thank you. I give myself away. I thank you for all that you're doing for me. Can you read for us again Psalms 18 verse 1? Let us see how the worshippers are depicted in these Psalms. I love you, Lord. Amen. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. Amen. When we lift up our hands in the sanctuary, in the sanctuary of our homes, in the sanctuary of our workplaces, in the sanctuary of our cars, hallelujah, yeah, hallelujah. in the sanctuary of our airplane, because it's not just going into the house of the, going into the church building. There are sanctuaries, altars, even the altar of our hearts. When we give it, dedicate it to God, we will be able to find strength. There is great strength when we worship the Lord. There is great strength when we open ourselves and we lift up our hands to the worship of our God. Because the Israelites worshipped the visible God who could not be represented in the form of any image. The sanctuary served to reflect the glory of the Lord and provide also for the believer a secure environment, hallelujah, Amen. for sinful people to approach their holy king. <coughs> Sorry, because in the sanctuary we find God. In our sanctuaries, we can experience God. We can encounter his presence and his blessings because the Lord is always full of compassion, compassion for us. Yes, Pastor Jen, what do you want to add there? I want to read Psalms 113. Okay, go ahead. Verse 1. Yes. Praise, okay. praise the Lord. Yes. Give praise. O servants of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord too. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. Amen. Praise. Everywhere from east to west. Praise the name of the Lord. Of the Lord, because we're talking about lifting up our hands, yes, the sanctuary, Worship. yes, in praise. Yes, for the Lord is high above the nations, his glory is higher, yes, than the heaven. Yes, and also here we can see that these also highlight blessings as the underlying principle and outcome of a relationship with, with God. this God. Mm -hmm. God is very relational. God is intentional with his relationship with us. Can we be intentional with our relationship with him? And we are intentional with him. His blessings are unending. He said that the Lord release and extend his blessing to all areas, all facets of our lives. Let, let me give this example, even though it's a very smaller example. Yes. But let's just talk about like um, uh, two people who are in love. If the, if you are used to complimenting your partner, yes. you see your wife, you say, even if it's a cloth she has worn over and over, but she still looks smart in it. Yes. Or he looks smart in the you still say, oh, you look beautiful. That's right. The person feels good hearing that from you. Yes. But I want you to look at a situation where this person dresses up, goes out, and everybody in the world tells yes. them they are looking good. That's right. Except, <laughs> Except when, when you come home, 
then there's nothing like that. He said the person he or she doesn't even notice. Notice. So I'm I'm using this example. Yes. It's it's we like praise. Yes, accolades. We we like good comments. And that is on a lesser level as we are with human us beings. as human beings. Yes. Now, I want you to imagine when you're in a relationship with God. God. And thank you. And all the time, the only thing you do yes. is to ask God for something. That's right. Each time you're in prayer, you have just come to ask for something. Yeah. You don't even say, oh God, thank you. Yeah. Notice. For this blessing. Yes. Notice. Once. Father, thank you for saving me from this accident. Father, yeah. thank you for saving me from this. Thank you for providing. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for forgiving me this sin. Thank you. You recognize what God has done yeah. for you. And you, not just that you come. Each time, it's also it's always request, 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 request. If it is you as a human being, and somebody is always calling you, and each time, just practical, let's be practical. Yes. Each time that you person call. calls you, you for know something. the person is calling you definitely for something. for something. Yeah, to ask for something. When you see that person's call as a human being, <laughs> <laughs> in fact, you may not even you may not even answer it. Yes. So you begin to ignore. Yeah, because you you already know what will be the outcome. Yes. But if you have someone that calls you to ask you how you are, I mean, once in a while you are still asking for something, no problem. But they call you genuinely. How are you? Yes. How are you doing? How is your family? How is your work? How is your business? When you see their call. Even sometimes, if you are stressed, you see them. You say, "At least let me even let me just talk to this person." Yes. That is how we we should have a relationship with God. Yes. That is not always request, request, request. Yes. Let us be in that move of lifting our hands, our hearts before Him in praise yes. for what He does, yes. for what He is doing, and for what He will continue to do. And that is one thing that God likes David for. Yes. David. Will always sing the praises of God. Yes. So let us be in that mood and of worship that never ends. Amen. And let it, let us start it from here. Amen. And when we say worship that never ends, it's also for our own benefit. Yes. Because the lesson says that when we thank our compassionate God, when we are intentional in this relationship with Him, He releases His yes. blessings. In all areas of our lives. Hallelujah. I'm telling you something that I've tested. That's why I'm so passionate. So, yes. He does it. He does it. You, you are shocked that so many things here yes, sometimes you may seem as if he's not there, he's not answering you, but he does it even for your own good mm -hmm. because you have learned to cultivate this relationship that comes back to say god thank, thank you. you thanks living that's what yes thanks it. living thanks living you are living a life of thanksgiving mm -hmm. thanks living that's what i termed it so this also trends us when we begin to live this kind of life it trends us not to be people that always grumble we are not always grumbling murmuring complaining you begin to sing to the lord Any new song. songs mm -hmm. And in this contest, singing to the Lord a new song means you're testifying of God's goodness. The goodness of God. His uncountable blessings and favors in your lives. You are living this life of thanksgiving, thanksgiving as I call it. It automatically drives you to be a, a person of testimony. Of praise. Of praise. Let us see Psalm 33, verse 3. Sing a new song of praise to him. Amen. Play skillfully on the harp. Yes. And sing with joy. Amen. Sing with joy. That means we can testify with joy. The things the Lord has done for us. 40 verse verses 3. three. three. Yes. He has given me a new song to sing. Amen. A hymn of praise to our God. Amen. Many will see what he has done Hallelujah. and be amazed. Amen. They will put their trust in, in the Lord. Lord. When we testify of the Lord's goodness, come on, I feel like singing now. <laughs> you discover that people around will notice. Strengthened. 
People around will be blessed by your testimonies of the goodness of God, of the faithfulness of God, of the revelations of God, of the majesty power of God, of his power. It just become part of your life. So let us learn to cultivate this attribute of singing a new song, testifying of the Lord's goodness in our lives. I mean, the Lord does so many beautiful things for us, mighty things for us. Shout in joy. Let us praise our compassionate God. And this will lead many to fear God because they will say, ah, ah, if this your God is able to do this, they will also begin to put their own trust in him. The Psalms summon people to sing a new song, that is to testify of the Lord's goodness. What is a new song here? The reason for the new song, for the testimony, are eight. There are eight things why we should always thank a compassionate God. The first is that it is a fresh recognition of the Lord's majesty and his sovereignty over the world. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. First point, when we sing new song, when we testify of the Lord's goodness, we are recognizing his majesty and his sovereignty. The second reason why we should testify <coughs> of the Lord's goodness is that when we testify of the Lord's goodness, we show our gratitude to this our wondrous God we show and demonstrate our gratitude for his care and salvation. And salvation as the creator and the judge of this earth. Get that. Because salvation is not only that we are saved from sin. Salvation means there is food in our homes. Saved from hunger. We are saved from hunger. Salvation means we are healed from our diseases. Hallelujah. Sickness. Salvation means we are delivered from the hands of the enemy. Salvation is so broad that we are alive today. Because many times when we hear salvation, we say, oh, say, the Lord has saved it. No, it's that the Lord has saved us from everything that should have destroyed us. So when we sing of the Lord's Song when we testify, when we, you know, it means the fourth point here is that we talk about the deliverance, that God has delivered us from death, delivered us from our enemies, delivered us from things that would have destroyed Jesus. our lives. And the fifth point, why we should testify, <laughs> glorify, sing new songs to God is that when we Testify. Here we sing this new song. We show that God has special favor over our lives, over the life of Israel in this context. But that, and the sixth point, it shows that why others also sing new song. We sing a new song that praises the Lord for His loving kindness and wonders. The new song is a special song for the seventh reason that we are expressing rekindled joy and promising renewed devotion to God. That, Father, this is who I used to be, but now I will no longer be that person because of your goodness in my life. And the last and the eighth point here is that when we testify of the Lord's goodness, it shows that we have new experience of divine deliverance, a kind of encounter that inspires us as a people to acknowledge the Lord as our creator and as our king. So is there any reason why you should not today be a thanks liver? <laughs> <laughs> a person that lives his life in thanksgiving. That's a thanks liver. To our precious God. God is always uh, caring for us. Let us acknowledge him. Let us sing new songs of praise. The new song can also express hope. 
in which case the newness of the song that is our testimony is demonstrated in the anticipation of the unique unprecedented experience of God's majesty in the future. So we are also thanking God now and thanking him for the things he will do for us in advance. Isn't that beautiful? Through worship goes beyond sacrifices and offerings and reflect a living relationship with God that inspires you in holiness, in righteousness, and in purity. I'm saying this because I've discovered these days that we don't like to preach on holiness. We don't like to talk about holiness and righteousness. I mean, God has even said it himself that for anyone to live where he is, Lives where he is. Without holiness, no man shall. Stand. That's it. The scripture says, "Without holiness, we cannot see the Lord." So this life uh, will help us to reflect that living this relationship that you know portrays and that pursues living a holy life that's always fresh and dynamic. So it's at the end of the day. Uh, our new song is a new expression. Our testimony becomes a new expression. Even each day of our love, we express our love and appreciate God for what he has done for us. Hallelujah. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? And the yes. answer is found in Psalms chapter 15. Yes. Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter your presence on your holy hill? And the answer is, those who lead blameless lives and do what is right, speaking the truth from sincere hearts. Amen. Those who refuse to gossip mm. or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord Amen. and keep their promises even when it hurts. Those who lend money without charging interest and who cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent. Yes. Such people will stand firm forever. My version says those who are not corruptible. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. Those who are not, who are not corruptible. Yes. You know. Yeah. Um, I have noticed something in our Christian life in the recent years, and that is uh, the emphasis on praising God and less emphasis on living a righteous life. Yes. So we come to church and much time is given to praise, which is wonderful because I want to dwell in the presence of the Lord, giving him praise. A day in the presence of God is better than a thousand elsewhere. Yes. But then... It's not only, worship is not only praise. Yes. It's a holistic package. Praise is a very irreplaceable part of worship. But leading a religious life is also an irreplaceable part of worship. That is why Psalms chapter 15 is emphasizing here that it's not just about praising God, that God really wants people who are praising him to lead blameless lives. Yes. To be people that will not be lying against people, people who will not be gossiping about other people, people who will live righteously. And they will not just be praising God with their mouth, they will be praising God with the whole of their, being. Of their life, of their being. You see, the Source, holiness is a mandatory requirement yes. for entering the presence of God. Yes. Israel's holiness was to be comprehensive, uniting worship with ethics and exercise in all aspects of life. The law was given to God's people to enable them to fulfill their greatest potential. The royal priesthood includes a life of holiness in the presence of God and bringing the covenant blessings to other nations. Amen. What does it mean to be holy? Let us look at what it means to be holy in 
Psalms chapter 24. If you can read that for us, 24, okay. verse 3 to 6, please. Okay, Psalms 24, verse 3 to 6. Verse 3 to 6. Okay. It says, 3 to 6, Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. And also, let me add, who is that righteous one? Micah 6 also painted dynamic a picture, picture of, of this life that Pastor Jen has talked about. The life of holiness, the life of righteousness, the life of doing things that elevate, that inspires, that uplifts. Micah 6 verses put it this way, what, with what shall I come before the Lord? Mm -hmm. So that's what Pastor Jay was saying. It's not only coming to lift our hands and sing praise. And when you get to the parking lot, when you get you to the office, the when you get to the house, you become a terror. You become, you, your life is like you end with God when you leave the church. Mm. So he said that it's a holistic life that should radiate in the living standards, morally, ethically, and otherwise. So with what shall I come before the Lord? And how and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him? This is Micah 6, verse 6 to 8. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? <laughs> In this context, we can look at burnt offering as our seeds, our tithes. With caves a year old, Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, 10,000 rivers of oil? You know, this anointing olive oil thing. Shall I give my firstborn for my sins, transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Now, verse 8, he answers that question. He said, God has shown you, O oh man, what is good? What is holy? What is righteous? And what is it? He said that it is what and what the, does the Lord requires of you? It is to do justice, to pursue justice, <clears throat> to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Still on holiness. Yes. Don't go away. Let's take a break. We'll continue. I will talk a little bit more on the holiness. And we'll Thank return. You. Thank you. Stay with us. The Three Angels Media International, 3AMI, is a Christian media organization that creates multicultural and multiracial value-based inspirational contents and entertainment using innovative technology. We tell and share stories of hope that shape and mold character, challenge our audiences to schedule their priorities, heal, uplift, and restore. 3 AMI will enrich viewers and diverse populations and families through films, series, shows, comedies, romance, thrillers, documentaries, mission stories, music, faith-based sermons, health and lifestyle, and other media presentations, etc. to empower Adventist families and the Christian communities around the world to live on purpose while we wait for the second and soon return of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Subscribe to 3AMI at 3AMIFilms.com Subscribe also to 3AMI YouTube channel. Welcome back. Still on holiness, we are talking about that living a life of praise is not complete if you are only praising God with your mouth. 
Yes. You have to praise God with your whole being, and part of it is being holy. Yes. In Psalms 101, it said, I will sing of your love and justice, Lord. Amen. I will praise you with songs. I will be careful to live a blameless life. I will lead a life of integrity Amen. in my own home. I will refuse to look at anything vile and vulgar. I hate all who deal crookedly. I will have nothing to do with them. I will reject perverse ideas mm. and stay away from every evil. I will not tolerate people who slander their neighbors. I will not endure conceit and pride. I will search for faithful people to be my companion. So Amen. who is your friend? Yes. Only those who are above oh. reproach will be allowed to serve me. I will not allow deceivers to serve in my house. And liars will not stay in my presence. Mm. My daily task will be to ferret out the wicked and free the city of the Lord from their grip. Now, I have to emphasize on this because he said, Lord, who may abide in your, in your tabernacle? Yes. Lord, who is worthy <clears throat> to reside with you? And I want us to dwell on this. Uh, many years ago when I was canvassing, canvassing it means selling books and called torturing is another word for it. I went to a police station in Nigeria and when I went there, I was selling religious books and as I came in, the police people, they were like, oh my goodness, we really want to buy from you, but um, we don't have money today. I said, okay. So, a few minutes later, just before I left, a policeman came in, God has done it. <laughs> God has done it. And I was wondering what God had done. He has this money in his hand, which I think it was a bribe they they collected from somebody yes. and he had his, he said god has always my sister wait we are going to buy your bibles today <laughs> i was wondering is this how we term righteousness yes you just collected bribe <laughs> 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 and you're coming to buy bible from me <laughs> that's okay so what what i'm trying to explain is sacrifices what what do we really term holiness do you swindle people and you see it as, as God's provision. If you pay tight. If you pay tight. Yeah. Yeah. Do you swindle people and you see it as God's provision? Yeah. Or God has provided. When you just swindle somebody. When somebody is actually hurting for what you've done to them. Do you do you, do you, you steal from your employer and you say it's God's provision? Do you do things that are not right? And you turn them around and and what, which word would I use? Um, justify. Yeah. Why you have done wrong and you change them, you, you're no longer sensitive to sin, you're no longer sensitive to the source of what you're doing, you're no longer sensitive to how you treat people, you just justify everything. What I want to remind us today is that God wants those who are worshiping in His presence to not just praise Him with the amount, but to lead a life. Of holiness and that is praising and worshiping him with the whole of their being that way they will declare his glory yes among and, the nations <clears throat> yeah and we, we're talking about a life of integrity integrity is part of being holy God has integrity and that's why God when he promised us he goes ahead to do what he has said to us that he will do for us so it's a challenge in your in our Christian lives to examine our lives, are we living in the will of God? How do we abide in his holy presence, in his tabernacle? Pointing back to what Pastor Jen has just mentioned. is a new season in the life of many <clears throat> that when we collect bribes and we circumvent processes come and tight. we find ways to do what is not just, then we think that bringing portion of that money to the house of the Lord. That's what makes it holy. Yeah, makes it holy, cleanses it. Politicians will steal, they will pay part of the funds, 
They bring part of the funds to the, the church. church. They build church. They donate to church. They give to the bishop, to the pastors, thinking that it has become a kind of penance. We pay for our sins, thinking that God, that justifies it before God, that, that God forgives. A, a, many years ago, a woman was arrested by EFCC. EFCC in Nigeria is the Economic Financial Crimes Commission. Because this woman paid a tithe of over 60 million naira. And this is this is this is a lot of money. Because she was stealing from the treasury, national treasury, from the coffers of the nation. And after stealing, she will pay 10% of what she stole. And you can imagine that. So there are so many ways, you know, we deviate from these things. And Micah says it all. He say, when we bring our offerings, our tithes, our, you know, it, does it justify it? So declaring the glory of God in our lives means that we will love God. We will fear God. We will live a life of integrity. In fact, in my note here, I, I, may, I put it that when we live this life of integrity and love for God mm -hmm. and the love of others is a life of a horizontal and vertical relationship, a vertical and horizontal relationship. One is with God, one is with others. You can't, you can't be in between. Mm -hmm. It's either your, you know, let's just think about how can we live this life of integrity, this life of holiness, that now spread the light to all others, wherever we go, to all other nations, declaring God's glory among the nation. is living this life that others will see. Let us see Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. Deuteronomy 6, verse 5, talks about how we can achieve this, how we can declare the glory of God, we have read Micah 6, verse 6 to 8. You know, so let's see Deuteronomy. Let's see Deuteronomy uh, 6, verse 5. Why we are on that, uh, when we begin to live this life of integrity, a life that has holiness, a life of purity, it becomes easier to declare God's glory wherever we go. 6, verse 5? Yes. Deuteronomy. And you must love the Lord your God. Amen. With all your heart. Amen. All your soul. Yes. And all your strength. All your strength. So it is our love for God that motivates us to live this life of integrity. And holiness. And holiness. Because when we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength, it's easy for us to become beacon of light, to radiate our lives to all other people wherever we find ourselves. And also, uh, you discover here that this love for God will also help us to have love for each other. And in declaring God's glory, how, how does that happen? Let, let's look at Psalm 96. In Psalm 96, it says, sing, oh, sing to the Lord a new song. That is testify, testifying of God's goodness. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Let's just, let's just change it. Testify of the Lord. The Lord testify his goodness to all of the earth. In your lifestyle, in, your, in, in the way you deal with others. In the context of Micah 6, verse 6 to 8, you deal with others justfully, you show mercy, and you walk humbly before the Lord. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare the glory of the Lord among the nations, his wonders to all among all his peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty 
are in his sanctuary. Give to the Lord, O families of, of the peoples, give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his court, O worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. And so on and, you know, it, it, it says we should declare, let the sea roar and all its fullness, let the field be joyful and all that is in it. Then all the trees of the woods will rejoice before the Lord, for he is coming, hallelujah, hallelujah. for he is coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and equity and all the peoples of the age. Say among all the nations, the Lord reigns. The world also is firmly established. He shall not be moved. He will judge the people righteously. So let us find ways that our worship of our God will be shown in our lives, in what we do, in secret, in public, in what we do at the church, in the office, in what we do wherever in our business deals, transactions. In fact, everything that becomes our lives tells and share of the goodness of a compassionate God. Our lifestyle choices, our character, our decisions, everything almost becomes an avenue of singing new song, of testifying. And declaring God's yes, glory. Of, of God's glory. So at the end, this becomes what Paul says, that our lives becomes a living epistle that others will read. And that is the essence of the three angels' message. Uh, there's a question, he said, compare this song with the three angels' messages of Revelation 14, verse 6 through 12. In what ways does it teach the same basic truths as does the entire message that we are to proclaim to the world? What are we to proclaim to the world according to three angels' messages? Fear God, Fear and, God give him, and, give and give him glory, glory for the hour of his judgment, judgment is coming. And worship him who made heaven, heaven and earth. earth. And earth and sea and springs of water. Hallelujah. So that is the essence of the three angels' message. That Jesus is coming again. And that we should live a life worthy of the gospel that radiate and spread this message. Because I see many times people who are easily turned off by church people. Right? Are you going to church to worship a human being? Are you going to church to worship God? Yeah. There are certain times when God does not delight in sacrifices. That's right. And it's interesting because we know that God likes us to come before him with sacrifice. Yes. But God does not delight in sacrifices or burnt offering or sin offerings. Yes. When you had the opportunity to live a righteous life. So that is what we were talking about a few minutes ago. It's not that coming to him to ask for forgiveness. No, 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 no. He will always oh, says a broken and contrite heart. I will not despise. Yes. But what we are saying is God is not, is, is not um, delight, delightful. Yes. In sacrifice, sacrifices or asking for forgiveness when there is no repentance. Yes. You look at Psalms, Chapter 40, verse 6, he says, You take no delight in sacrifices or offering. Now that now you have made me listen, I finally understand. You don't require burnt offerings or sin offerings. Then I said, Look, I have come, as it's written about me in the scriptures. I take joy in doing your will, my God. Amen. For your instructions are written on my heart. I have told all your people about your justice. I have not been afraid to speak out as you, O oh Lord, well know. I have not kept the good news of your justice hidden in my heart. I have talked about your faithfulness and saving power. I have told everyone in the great assembly of your unfailing love and faithfulness. Yes. So, God wants us 
not just to dwell in sin offerings, burnt offerings, but to have a repentant heart and to live in his will. Like the prophets, the psalmists decry various misuses of worship. That's exactly what we're saying. You don't use unholy things and try to turn them into holy things. In fact, Psalm 51, mm -hmm. verse 16 through 19 summarizes it this way. We say that God delights in a broken... The sacrifices of God are a broken, broken spirit, a contrite heart. Mm -hmm. a, 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 you know, it's... it's yeah, yeah. They and, and we also remember in the Bible when people were giving offerings and giving offerings and yes. the widow went and dropped her mind. Yes. And Jesus said that she has given more than every Everyone. other person. Yes. Because it's not about you give. Yes. It's the heart yes. that you give. With. Yes. God is not rebuking his people for their sacrifices and burnt offerings, but for their wickedness and acts of injustice that they had done in their personal lives. The Psalms are not preaching against sacrifice and worship, but against vain sacrifice yes. and empty worship demonstrated in the unrighteousness of this worship. You are worshiping in a church. You are praising God. But while you are praising and worshiping the King of Kings of Holiness, you are there looking at your concubine or somebody you are committing adultery with. Side chicks. Or, or, you know, and you are worshiping yeah. The God of holiness. Yeah. And after you finish worshiping, you make the person outside in the parking lot talking about fornication and adultery. And so the church was actually just a meeting point. Yes. So let us finish with God, then we go about our business. That is what we are talking about. Vain sacrifices, vain worship, using things that are holy for Same. things that are not holy. God wants us to live a completely holy life. When the unity between the outward expression of worship and the correct inner motivation for worship falls apart, rituals usually become more important yes. in and of themselves than does the actual experience of drawing close to God. That is, the forms of worship become an end in themselves as opposed to the God whom those rituals are supposed to point to and to reveal. Now, the church going to church becomes a social gathering. Or you don't even go at all. So what we are talking or about... Or answering a Christian. Yeah, or even if you don't, you don't, you say, yeah, I believe in God. And somebody talks to you, you about having a relationship with God. And you're so defensive and say, you don't have a problem with God. That is, after a look at the lives of those going to church... And they better than you. All those things are statements that the enemy puts in your mouth to defend your... I don't want to use the word stupidity because if you have had an encounter with God, you know very well when you're falling apart. Right. So please, stop covering what you should not cover. Come to God with humility. Come to God with holiness. And worship him in totality of faith, totality of praise. That is what we are talking about. A place where the worship never ends. Yeah, it's going to it's going to be a time to come, but we want to start living that experience yes. now and know that God is not just God you can bring anything to. He wants a true worshiper who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes, and John also talks about it. Yes. Indeed. When we see the encounter of the woman that met Jesus, you know, and Jesus was explaining deeper things to her. And if we look at John 4, verse 23 and 24, uh, which Pastor Jen, I want you to read. God is trying to tell this one that worshiping God is not enough. Going to church, being religious is not enough. Identifying as a Muslim, as a Christian, as a Jew, as whatever religion you belong to, it's not just enough. God is looking at the heart. Yes. Yes. But the time is coming. Yes. Indeed, it's here now. When true worshippers will worship the Father in, in spirit, spirit and in truth. 24. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. Yes. 
For God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship him in spirit. And in truth. In other words, head knowledge is not enough. Mm -hmm. The knowledge of God is not enough when the spirit is not there. So we must worship God, yes, in truth. We must know our theology about God. We must know our doctrines. And But that's another problem. Many times you see people who are so fundamental in knowing the, the truth, Bible. knowing the Bible, knowing the word. But sometimes you see that the spiritual component. That's what we are talking about. It becomes a ritual. Yes. You are so you are so concerned with 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 you you see somebody that is worshiping God from her heart or his heart. You're more concerned with um their dressing, yeah. which not that you shouldn't dress well. You're more concerned with their dressing. The oh, for, for this, 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 let face the real things. Yes. Face the real things. It's not. It's not. And it's not. It's not. Stop dwelling on the minors. Yes. Dwell on the things that are important for holiness. That's right. Because it's a connection. It's a relationship. That's why Jesus spoke to the woman himself. He said that God is seeking those people that will worship him in humility, in truth. And the spirit is also there. They are connecting. They are broken. That's why the psalmist says that the sacrifice that are acceptable before God is a contriter, a broken heart, a heart that is always open, a, a, the ear that is available to listen to the Lord's in, instruction, to the direction, to the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Central to worship is the need yes. for repentance. You must continually repent and draw to God. Yes. True repentance. Includes sorrow for sin yes. and a turning away from it. We shall not renounce sin unless we see its sinfulness. Mm. Until we turn away from it in heart, there will be no real change in life. There are many who fail to understand the true nature of repentance. Multitude sorrow that they have sinned and even make an outward reformation because they fear that their wrongdoing will bring suffering upon themselves. But that is not repentance. Yes. The repentance that God wants is the one that sees sin as a sinfulness and hates Evil. even the sight of it. Yes. May God help us to really praise God with all of our being. In Jesus' name. Amen. So on this note, we will end this discussion. We invite you to open your heart and your life to this wonderful God and to enter into this relationship that leads you to the place where you establish this connection with God that is unending. That's when he said worship that never ends. is a relationship, a connection, a deep connection with God and his spirit that helps you to thrive that is unending. We are going to sing the last portion of this so let every kindred and tribe worship a king. Let every
as Lord of all. Amen. We worship your name and we want to dwell in the place where worship never ends. Amen. Father, may we always be in your presence yes. and continually worship you and sing your praises. Amen. May our lives sing your praises, O oh God. Yes. And in a way, we have not been singing your praises with our lives. Father, forgive us Amen. and help us to sing your praises with our whole lives. Yes. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for studying with us. Always remember that Jesus is coming again and soon. That's why he's inviting us into a relationship that connects us to be in worship with him and his Holy Spirit that is unending. Until then, remain blessed. God bless you. Thank you. The Three Angels Media International, 3AMI, is a Christian media organization that creates multicultural and multiracial value-based inspirational contents and entertainment using innovative technology. We tell and share stories of hope that shape and mold character, challenge our audiences to schedule their priorities, heal, uplift, and restore. 3 AMI will enrich viewers and diverse populations and families through films, series, shows, comedies, romance, thrillers, documentaries, mission stories, music, faith-based sermons, health and lifestyle, and other media presentations, etc. to empower Adventist families and the Christian communities around the world to live on purpose while we wait for the second and soon return of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Subscribe to 3AMI at 3AMIFilms.com Subscribe also to 3AMI YouTube channel 